Superior limb. Okay, there are three bones in your arm that don't include wrist and hand that you need to know, and they're all long bones. And you can identify them based on their ends. The humerus, humerus, has a nice, smooth, round head. The head of the humerus articulates with the glenoid fossa on the scapula, and that's what creates your shoulder joint. If you look, this is the posterior view of the humerus. This is the anterior view of the humerus. Now think about this for a second. The head of the humerus articulates with the scapula, which means this has to be medial. The head has to point to the medial side of the body because that's where it articulates with the um, glenoid fossa. If this is medial, then you can see, and again, this, you have to come in and play with your bones to figure this out, but you can actually see a bump that's lateral to the head of the humerus, and that bump is called the greater, greater tubercle. The greater tubercle has, is separated from the next little bump called the lesser tubercle by a groove, a little, it's a groove that's called the intertubercular groove, inter between tubercular, tubercular, groove. They also call it an intertubercular sulcus. There, this is, we're actually going to have the tendon of the long head of biceps brachii that travels between the two tubercles and helps stabilize the shoulder joint, but most of these things, there's a reason why we're learning them. Now, on the lateral aspect of your humerus, there's kind of a bumpy region, and it goes all the way down to this bump. It's just kind of rough and bumpy, and that is called the deltoid tuberosity. And guess who attaches there? The deltoid muscle. The deltoid muscle is your shoulder muscle, and so it comes out, and it's lateral, so it makes sense that it would attach to a lateral bumpy area, and it's kind of a long space that it attaches to kind of smears onto the bone itself. All right. We have a medial epicondyle and a lateral epicondyle. As long as you know which side of the humerus is medial and which side is lateral, you're cool. The, the medial and lateral epicondyles are the bumps on the distal end of the humerus and match up the head of the humerus with the medial epicondyle. Match up the other side with lateral epicondyle. Being able to tell anterior and posterior aspects of the humerus will help you identify uh, the, whether or not your humerus comes from the right or left side of the body. And what you'll notice is on the distal end of the humerus, there's kind of a rounded circle, and this is an articulation of the radius. The radius attaches here, and it's called the capitulum. Capitulum. Next to it is kind of this, I don't know, like what is that? It, it looks almost like a pulley to me. Clearly we need another color. This right here, that it's kind of like a pulley looking structure, and it's called the trochlea. And that's where the ulna articulates with the humerus. Let's look. I think I got all my humerus parts. Let's take a look at the ulna and the radius and see if we can see like where these things articulate. The capitulum was like a little, so I'm going to pretend draw a humerus up here. The capitulum is kind of a rounded little bump, and the 
head of the radius is this round, like, twisty thing. And that is, that articulates with the capitulum. So this is the head of the radius. Are you good with the fact that the radius has this radial round uh, proximal end? Just super clear and obvious. You also have the radial tuberosity on the radius. It's a bump that's found on the surface of the radius. The radius as a whole, in anatomical position, the radius is on the thumb side of the body. The ulna is medial. The ulna is on the pinky side of the body. One more thing. This is radial tuberosity. This is styloid process. Styloid process of the radius, you can feel it. It's a little bump that is just, um, you can tell that it's still attached to your radius. It's not wrist yet, but it's where the wrist bones articulate. Okay, your ulna, which is medial in anatomical position, your ulna has a styloid process. Look, there it is, right? Ooh, really? Try that. There's a little bump right there. That's the styloid process as well, except it's the styloid process of the ulna. The ulna has this space right here. This is called the trochlear notch. Trochlear notch. Who's that attached to, dog pounds? It attaches to the trochlea of the humerus. Ah, look at that. Really? The trochlear notch and the trochlea, a match made in heaven. Check this out. This little guy right here, you can see it approximately there. That little fella is the, who's going to fit in there, do you think? Oh, look. We shall remember this forever. What? Can you see that and appreciate the fact that the radius, the head of the radius fits right in that little notch, which is why it's called the radial notch. Radial notch. Have to throw an exclamation point on that. What else do we have to know on our ulna? You got to know the coronoid process. The coronoid process is the tip of the trochlear notch. Here's my trochlear notch. The very tip, right there, is my coronoid process. Coronoid. Does that annoy you? I find it annoying because it is not the coracoid process. Where was that? That was on your scapula. The coracoid process is scapular. The coronoid process is so annoying, and it's on the ulna. Don't whack somebody with an ulna. There's one more. What was it? Ah, oh, my favorite. This is my favorite bone bump in the whole wide world. Are you ready? You probably already can guess what it is because I probably already threatened you with mine if you know me in real life. And if you've watched any of these videos, you probably have been threatened with um, mine as well. Guess what that is? That is your olecranon. What? What is the olecranon? The olecranon is your elbow. So if somebody takes the elbow bomb and whacks you upside the head with the olecranon, that's part of the ulna. And that is not going to feel good. So don't get a black eye from somebody's olecranon. Do not take an olecranon upside the temporal bone because that will not feel good. Shall we look at the rest of our upper limb? Why, yes, we shall. What is it? All right, take a deep breath because watch and learn. Who's this? Oh, my gosh. That's my good friend, the, I think that's the radius, thumb, radius side. Radius, this is my good friend, the ulna, pinky side. 
What are all those blobs? They're called carpels. The carpels are basically your wrist bones. Your metacarpals are your palm bones. It looks like they're fingers. These are my metacarpals. It looks like they're just really long fingers, which is why skeletons look like they have really long fingers, because you can't see that this is just a single bone that extends down into the wrist blob bones. Every one of your carpals has a name. We're not going to learn those right now. Notice that distal to the metacarpals, we have one, two, three phalanges, phalanges on each finger. And that makes sense. Except for your thumb, you only have two phalanges. You have a proximal phalanx. Phalanx is singular, a phalange. And you have a distal phalanx. And here you have a proximal phalanx, a middle phalanx, and a distal phalanx. That's it. Superior limb is easy, isn't it? Now let's head down to the lower limb where we shall talk about our friendly pelvis.